What's up, guys? I'm Emily Swallow. Uh, if you're looking at this, you're watching the Virtual Cantina Network. This is the way. Primary ignition. Hey guys. Hello, hello. Happy Monday. Tis Monday, also known as Ahsoka Eve. <laughs> exactly. We, we're, every <laughs> Monday is now Ahsoka Eve, basically. I love it. Which is very exciting. Loving it so much. Um, we're coming to you uh, six days after the premiere of the first episode Ooh. of Ahsoka, um, which is crazy that we've almost had a week to think I about know. it. And now we get a new one tomorrow. Um, <laughs> So there's like there's a lot to take in. How all right? First General question out there. La De La Torre. <laughs> Hello. Um, Hi, how Mike. many times did Hi, you John. watch it, and did you love it? Actually, tell us in the comments too. How many yeah. times did everyone watch Ahsoka, and did you love it? Ashley, you go first, and everyone else in the chat should answer too. There are okay. First of all, make sure you connect to your Facebook to streamyard.com slash Facebook so we can see who's talking to us. We love you guys. We want to be able to talk with you. Um, but yeah, I overall, I loved it. Um, do I think there was one thing, and I'm pretty sure everyone had the same gripe as I did, um, that I didn't necessarily agree with, but um it's kind of like, as I said on the watch along on Thursday night, it's kind of like being an artist and then going back in to work on a piece that you've already done and George finding Lucas. ways to improve it or to change it. And I feel like that's kind of what Dave is doing with this. Um, he did learn from George. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. But yeah. Um, uh, overall, it was amazing. And I am really looking forward to seeing where it goes from here yeah um i feel really good about the start uh hi everyone who's joining our topic for tonight which i forgot to mention right at the start we are going to talk about um our thoughts on the first two episodes of the ahsoka show it was nice that we got a double premiere um, a little more content to um wrap ourselves around because i think one episode would have been underwhelming and three would have and probably it been ended on a cliffhanger yeah and and the and a sad cliffhanger in the way that like we know that there's no imminent danger there considering we've seen trailers um but i <laughs> even without that like the, the pretend that we don't know um i didn't think there was a ton of tension to that um but because uh, I, I see where the path is going like she's on the typical hero's journey is my thought with sabine and we'll, we'll come right. to that in a second but yeah. we're gonna we're gonna sort of go through um the first two episodes and talk the connections to rebels of which there are many um what we liked about it what we are excited about maybe a little bit of predictions because we didn't get to do our prediction show um because of the scheduling change <laughs> Um, luckily, throughout the Summer of Snips, we did a lot of predictions, and even though Summer of Snips ended a day early and sort of usurped our Monday night show last week, um, we still had a great run throughout Summer of Snips talking all things yeah. Ahsoka here on Rebels Revisited, and um, thanks everyone who joined us for the summer. It was a blast. I know it I had a so much fun. great time. Yeah, yeah same. Um, my initial thoughts on the Ahsoka show is that I really did like it a lot. I, I would say I loved it. Um, I didn't know what to expect, honestly, despite all of our conversations and all of our predictions. And you know, I know I'm never right. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I really just want Lethal to be clean and healthy and doing well. God, and it seems gorgeous, like it is. Oh, oh my it's... God. Got rid of that big dome and put some uh, nice fires it, up there. Beautiful. It was so much more beautiful than I thought it was going to be. I thought live sure. action Lethal really delivered um, and felt like Lethal. I thought the mural looked amazing. Um, I was fully blown away when um, Clancy Brown popped in as Ryder Zahi. Yeah, You were right. You nailed it. Oh, 
I was hoping, I was like, all right, what are the odds they're going to do it? But then I was like, Clancy's been in so much Star Wars. He was in yeah. The Mandalorian. Um, he's done Tales of the Jedi. Obviously, he's been Ryder in Rebels. And um, it, it's just, he's part of the family. Yeah. So I felt like asking him back for this would have been like, mm, maybe he's busy. I don't know. But it's worth he looked shot. great with the beard and everything. He, looks he was so easy to cover up. Yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> I would love to. Oh man, now I want to meet Clancy Brown, but he doesn't do nothing. He doesn't sign autographs. He doesn't do the con circuit. Yeah, like he's just not that guy, and that's fine. We approached him numerous times when I was at Tops, and he was not interested in signing autographs. Aww. But um, it's okay. Uh, not everyone has I to mean, participate. I hope this changes his mind. Yeah, maybe. So, yeah. yeah. Oh my God, Spencer! Enough. <laughs> the Mar- I will tell you my <laughs> Merrick theory. We'll get um, there. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> um, but I I love seeing Clancy Brown. I also was really surprised to see. Senator Jai Kel. Yeah. That, Homeboys uh, moving on up in the world. Yeah. You know, we talk a lot about the intentionality of Rebels and how little things plop in in seasons one, two, three that either lead to Rogue One, that explain certain characters' motivations. You meet someone and they become really important later. Jai Kel was one of them. The Iron Squadron, who no one liked, became like Mart Matten, became really important. Um, yeah. Jai Kel and Mart Matten were part of the collection of misfit toys, as I always refer to them, <laughs> who helped, um, you know, the, the crew from season four who like helped liberate Lethal along with like Lando and Hondo and Clancy yeah. Brown as Ryder Zahi, like that whole crew. Um, you know, when they went back to Lethal in season four, it took all those random people and eventually the Purgle um, to make it happen. So it was cool to see him there, like still uh, there and like a known hero in front of the mural. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Not only that, like it, it just, it's a testament to Ezra and the ghost crews sacrifices that like someone that he randomly met at an imperial academy is changing lethal for the better yeah um jeff says he I, met clancy at the premiere of the savage press arc which is really cool did. i totally jeff forgot he was savage to- press i'm sorry <laughs> jeff goes to everything he meets yeah. everyone jeff is the coolest the guy he's he's he, he just he is waldo oh, no he's the doctor from doctor who like remember when he just like <laughs> pops up throughout history and it's like yeah there's everywhere that's that's what that's, Je- Jeff. that's what Jeff is. Yeah, that's Jeff. <laughs> Love it. If there was an event, he was there, um, which is crazy. <laughs> and if not, I- we're gonna tell him about it, and he'll go there. But yeah, that's yeah, so I am. Cool. Um, I have. I've always wanted to meet Clancy Brown because of Savage Press, and I yeah. wanted him to sign autographs at Savage. It would have been great to have with Sam Witwer and everyone. Um, which apparently Sam Witwer was a guest voice. Um, he was an. He was a. Um, an additional voices voice. Um, in the credits. I know. So what is that leading to? There's a lot of theories, um, which maybe, actually, let's just dive right in and get this one of out the of the droid? way. Yeah. What's that? Maybe the voice of one of the droids. I, I think it was, yeah, legitimately like a crowd voice, right? Um, yeah. And, you know, they, they always bring in people just to do a bunch of that stuff. Um, I think we should get that out of the way. Um, Merrick, <laughs> and who do we think he is? Uh, I have thoughts. Actually, we're going to get into all the things we love all the things we're excited about. I do want to throw this out there right away because I think it is the big mystery. Merrick pops in for a couple of scenes, has a really cool lightsaber fight with Ahsoka Tano. I think we thought in our prediction show he could be one of like a couple different people with like um, an Inquisitor, just a, an Inquisitor, or Barris Afi, or Ezra. Those are sort of the sort of top list of like, you know, why why does he not have a credit associated with him as the actor, right? The stunt person is shown, but not the yeah. actor. He must be someone. Otherwise, they would just tell us who it is, is my thought there. Um, or he's brand new and they're trying to they're trying to pull an emphasis nest and it's a girl, which means it could be Barris. Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. What, who do you think it is? Yeah, let us know in the chats, guys. Let us know who you think Merrick is. And let's debunk Spencer's theory of it being Ezra, please, yeah. because I refuse to acknowledge that some sort yeah. of thing could happen. But- I think on the Ahsoka after, by the way, it's an after show that um, we have on the network now. It came out on Fridays. Um, Friday nights. John, Mike, Bryce, um, they were all there. Uh, they talked a little bit about this, and I think they all kind of agreed that like Ezra was definitely a top candidate, but no one wanted that. Um, and I think I, I think we all feel that way too. Like Ezra has to be in the consideration set to like be that character, um, but I none of us want that to be the case. And yeah, I think he's yeah. like Luke, where he's transcended the t- temptation of the dark side. Like he's he's on the, the the path of good, 
Like mm-hmm. he's he's had his temptation. And he's gotten close with the the uh, Sith holocron and everything, but mm-hmm. um, him learning from Kanan and learning from the Bendu and 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 the Loth wolves. Um, yeah, it's just yeah, it's it's kept him on that good path. So I don't think it's Ezra. However, I do think it's someone we've seen before. Um, yeah, that's why I. I, I kind of glad they're keeping it mystery so we can just both sit there and be like oh when it finally happens yeah, you know exactly yeah. uh brad brings up a good point merrick is just merrick um it's an option i think the, there are four options merrick is a new character named mm-hmm. merrick and he's no one he's merrick nobody right that's yeah. probably the vegas odds for the win um oh, number two yeah. he's ezra right and they're swerving us with ezra and what happened to him and he went down a path of darkness right and we got to get him back we got to do a redemption story because that's not been done enough in star wars um <laughs> yeah. number three they're specifically not telling us who this is because it is someone important that we know from the past and if it's not ezra it's barisafi because who else is as closely connected to ahsoka than that's dark side user other than barisafi who isn't already dead um because yeah. i would think like maybe asajj ventress or someone would be in that but she's dead um and then uh, I keep seeing Star Killer thrown around as an option, um, yeah. which I don't know if they're going to bring him into the e- like from the EU into canon um, at all. Um, if, I think a lot of people think he's on the list. Um, if they were to do it, I don't know if they would do it in this way. He seems like the seventh build character in this show when right. like he is leading man name above the credits. And I would promote the shit out of it. I would be like, Sam Witwer is back <laughs> as Star Killer. That's the show. Print the money. Like, (laughs) I don't think that this would be the answer to that. Um, Yeah. But I think it's an option, right? So, yeah. I mean, it's entirely possible. Um, Yeah. Uh, Scooby says, Barris is more likely, but I prefer a new character. Yeah. Yes. I love my Barris, Afi. By the way, would you like to tell everyone, since we're talking about Barris, what the Barris news is? Yes. So, next Wednesday... Um, Miss Jamie and I will be doing our next episode of Daughters of the Galaxy featuring Luminara Unduli and Barisafi. So we're, we're branching out post Summer of Snips and the logical choice um, was her former best friend. Yeah. I, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, I think we will see Barris in some form. And who knows, by the time the next episode comes out, it's certainly possible. Um, I, I love Barris, and, and you know I love my Clone Wars iteration of Barris. Uh, yeah. But uh, the, the two of them are fantastic, Barris and Luminara. I have a lot of love for Luminara, too, as much yeah. as I get mad at her uh, for what she did. I blame her for a lot. Um, that woman went through some suffering, though, as we've watched in Rebels. Yeah. Now, um, but that would be a great conversation. Set up her... Okay, now, obviously, we're going to talk about this next Wednesday, but do you think she set up Luminara to be a pawn to capture Jedi? Probably. I think that Barris, like... I wonder if Barris was like, hey, um, don't kill this one. Let's do something worse. Um, yeah. And got in touch with someone. And then right? soul. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love stuff. it. I mean, that's 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 dark stuff. I mean, it's so dark. I love it. Um, yeah, but she's been so betrayed. Like, someone ultimately betrayed by the Jedi finds a way yeah. to capture them using the body of her dead master. Like, know, ugh, so, so twisted. It's so, I know, it's really out there. <laughs> I kind of love it. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Um, the actresses who play Barris and Luminara in the prequels will be at right. Rhode Island Comic Con. So, yep. Mary Oyaya and Nalini Kashini? Kash- K- no, I'm getting it wrong. Um, I'm forgetting their names, but yeah, yeah we'll look it up <laughs> we'll for look you. It up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Mary and funny. Nalini, I think, are the. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm ruining the names. I should have had that on the ready, but yes, they'll be at. Ro- I'm telling you, Rhode Island Comic Con is where it's at. People, everyone it's needs to me. come to Rhode Island. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, John, I caught that as well. Uh, the pronouns, uh, Merrick having male pronouns. Um, and I wonder if it was just a slip on their regard um, because I thought they were doing everything they could to protect the. Uh, identity of this character Um, because but by the way if they said there that would have been like obvious that we're trying to hide something Um, I wish he would have just said Merrick will complete the task that would have been like that would have solved everything right there and like oh foiled Um, but I actually (laughs) do think it is a guy I also have the roguest of rogue theories and then after texting Ashley and Spencer and Jamie and everyone I forgot to do my math um, I was saying there is another person on the list, and it's uh, Jason Sindula. 
Um, but then I remembered yeah. I did my math wrong. In my mind, he was 17. So he would be like the same age as when Ezra was a Padawan and everything. He's 11 at the time of the show. I was doing my math off of the start of Rebels, not the end of Rebels. So he's not 16 or 17. He's 11 or 12. Um, so he's not old enough to be that man in that suit. Um, right. So it probably can't be Jason Syndulla unless something crazy town happened and he looks like a full grown ass man. Um, the only other one, and it was because I mentioned Jason Syndulla, I was like, well, what else would hurt the most, right? If it's not Ezra, uh, Tristan Wren, Tristan Wren, Sabine's brother. Like oh. that's the only other person I could think. Oh. I'm running out of terrible so options for everyone. Dirty. Oh I know. I'm just trying to ruin people at this point. So oh. Tristan Wren, oh. you know, partnering up with Corky Crees, um, done and done. So by the way, if anyone knows who Tristan Wren is, uh, you get a cookie because he's in like two episodes of Rebels and And you've been um, watching our show. Yes, exactly. <laughs> by the way, I love Tristan Wren as a character. Um, he's the least terrible, I guess, of Sabine's family, truly. Um, and I mean, he tried. Yeah, and I'm and he, he like gets it together. Yeah, yeah, he gets it together. All right, so now that we've crazy. gone through our crazy theories, let's yeah. talk about um, what we loved most about the Ahsoka premiere. Um, and you tell us in the chat what you guys liked most as well. Uh, yeah. Ashley, feel free to take it away with like what you thought really worked. What was your favorite parts? Okay, first of all, the scene where Chopper is in the Phantom and he's like, shoot it down. And, and, and Hera's like, I knew you were going to leave. It's leave over Chopper. the city. And he's like, is that bad? <laughs> I was Zero regard for it. human life. Yeah. And, <laughs> I was watching it with my friend who hasn't watched Rebels yet. Well, hadn't at the time. He just finished yesterday. But like, he hadn't watched Rebels yet. And he's like, oh my God. Like, what is so funny? And I'm like, did you hear what he just said? So in the part where he's like going through all his like junk pile, mm -hmm. trying to find a tracking device, like it's yeah. such a chopper moment and I loved it. So absolutely perfect. Yeah. A plus from that. Chopper um, was perfection in live perfection. action. If they translated any character perfectly, like one-to-one -one <laughs> animation to live action. It was chopper. Yes. And surprisingly the deadly calm of Balin mm. Skull and oh, right. Um, and and Shin Hati, like Skull and Hati are like mythical creatures in, in Norse mythology. Like they're they're wolves. They chase the sun and sun the, and the moon. moon. So that's really yeah. cool. Dave keeping up with his wolf mythology as usual. Um, that was really cool. But like they're so dangerous and they're so calm. Um, I kind of in like the classic Star Wars loving me really loved the the costume design. Shout mm. out. To Shauna and team for making amazing costumes on this. Um, just, just the whole like, it, it felt like an episode of Rebels to me. It really did. It did. I was surprised how much it felt like Rebels, and I wonder if that was a turnoff to some people. Um, like I, I watched. By the way, I watched the show uh, twice. I only watched each episode twice, and didn't go like, "Oh, Same. hello, Ahsoka. Do you know that we've been talking about you? It's your show now." Yeah. Um, She's like, "I saw little cats on TV." She heard them meow, and she oh, went yeah. right to Oh no, TV. my cats went the same way. Yeah, <laughs> I thought this. I thought the live action Loth cat, Loth cat puppet was a standout. Yeah. Um, I thought that was very cute. I, li I like that it also shows that Sabine is still a caring, empathetic person, even though she's yeah. like very cold and tense with Ahsoka. Um, yeah. What's interesting is that, you know, we forget because like we've done a significant time jump now from like the end of the Rebels series, which is basically at the, not counting the coda at the end, but like it's where like Rebels ends. It's 10 years, right? It, it's a jump. Yeah. Like yeah. they go from it's a 10 or 11 years. They go from like five, four, one year before battle of Yavin to now the Mandalorian time period, post episode six, it's at least 10 years. Yeah. Um, these women are in their thirties and I actually Sabine's in her thirties and Ahsoka's in her Ahsoka's 40. I think like these are not young women yeah. and yet they are in some ways emotionally stilted and that they can't even have a conversation with each other because they are just, and by the way, there are plenty of men like that too. Um, yeah. in Star Wars, there's a lot of, um, like <laughs> I like to think of arrested development happening in Star Wars. And sometimes it's because of dogma. Sometimes it's because of like past trauma that they need to unpack. I think for the two of them, they represent both of those sides equally. Yeah. Um, but it didn't seem like they changed very much from where we left them. 
um, at, at the end of Rebels uh, in that regard. But something happened. And man, do they not really like each other. Like, I thought it was really obvious that, like, whatever happened was really traumatic. And they're going to have to tell us what it was because it seemed like they came from a place where, like, I don't even want to be in this room with you right now. But we're going to have to figure out how to make this work because it's necessary. And I think what happened, whatever happened with Sabine, led to Ahsoka not wanting to train Grogu. Grogu. Like, she's just yes. like, nope, I cannot go through this again. Somebody who's got way yeah. more patience than me, take the baby. But, yeah, um, take the baby. <laughs> honestly, the, the, the problem with that is, like, I'm like, well, what did you do? Like, it's like when someone's telling a story, like, you have your two best girlfriends telling a story, and they had a fight, and they're not they're just like, oh, she's such a bitch. And you're like... What happened? What yeah, and nobody's telling action. you because they're just too busy going like this at each other, and it's like the tension mm -hmm. is just exhausting. Like it's so high school, but like, yeah, I, I really want to see the resolution on it. That um, is the most tension in the show right now. Is the, yeah, the what happened between Ahsoka and Sabine beforehand? More mm -hmm. so than even where we're going. I actually feel like I could, like, I understand what, what I like about this, even though it is season five of Rebels. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's very clear, even if you didn't watch seasons one through four what every character's um, main motivation is, mm -hmm. uh, where everyone currently is and where they're headed. Um, I think the forward path is very clear. We're now asking to be filled in on the stuff that was um, not told to us that happened off screen beforehand. And I think yeah. that's perfectly fair with any with any serial um, that that will be revealed over time. It's just we're exactly. very impatient. You don't want all the cards on the table ahead of time. Like you want to no. build the anticipation and build the story. Yeah. Um, give people valuable character arcs and, and, and yes, let them progress. Tell um, their stories. I think Sabine is on the, the classic hero's journey of like, what is it when you get summoned and you reject it? And then something triggers the fact that you have to say yes, and you go on and you become successful. That's sort of the classic tale. There's obviously much more convoluted <laughs> ways of getting there, but like, um, back to tank black jacks. <laughs> please no. Um, nah, nah. Yeah, so ten year jump from Battle of Yavin. Um, oh, so Scoob, I do want to. I I like your questions um, or your your request over here to rank the transition. I do think Chopper was the easiest because it's a droid, right? Um, I actually yeah. think that Ahsoka works because we've already seen her a little bit, and I think. I, I, I read some reviews where like Rosario was very stoic and I was like, yes, she's older and she's been through a lot. And I think she's annoyed by everyone. Um, yeah. And she's like still doing this. I would be so pissed if like I left the Jedi order. How many years ago I watched order 66 Anakin's dead. Yeah. Luke had to save Anakin. And yet we're back. We're back again. Back, 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 back again. Like the evil it never stops. End. The cycle Panada. continues. Yeah. The, the yeah. wheel keeps on spinning toward chaos. If I were her, I would just be exhausted. It's like, can I please have a break? You know, Thrawn is coming back. It's un unreal. Um, so for me, right. it goes Chopper, Ahsoka. I then think um, Hera and Sabine are in a tie, and but not in a bad way. I think they're both, I think they're both great. I will say it is harder for me to... Um, like see Hera as matching animation because the voice is so different. Like Mary Elizabeth yeah. sounds nothing like Vanessa. Whereas like Sabine, um, the two actresses, Tia and Natasha have a similar delicateness like to yeah. them where Vanessa is like, man, is Vanessa tough? And I don't know if Mary has delivered the toughness yet. Right. I, I think Hera is, is tough. But I also think she has a sense of motherly warmth to her. Mm -hmm. And I think it's starting to Good come one. out slowly when she, especially when she was visiting Sabine in the hospital via hologram. Um, it, it obviously she's concerned, but I felt like, you know, she could have used a little bit more warmth. But See, um, I was in the opposite direction. I thought she could have been tougher. When we were on the really? <laughs> when we were on the factory tour, I yeah. would have shot every person in that room without even waiting. Like I was so angry at every single person who was secretly an Imperial and watching Hera like give them rope. I was like, absolutely not. Like she I would have hit people trust with things. Anybody. No, yeah, I would have I would have been hitting people over the head with hammers, yeah. like from the jump. So um, that seemed to me that Hera was slipping. She was getting soft. I felt that, like, and probably this yeah, is Hera, it's probably intentional, right? Like, yeah. Hera's gotten soft, um, probably because, you know, peace and now time. she's going to be pulled back into it, right? Like, yeah. it's been peacetime. And she's like, oh, finally, it's over. And then, like, girl, it's never over. It's ne and, and that's she, the. She spent the last 10 years, you know, raising her child and, and kind of 
you know, managing the new Republic and, and getting, mm-hmm. you know, people where they need to be in the galaxy to put out the fires as needed from like little spots of Imperial mm-hmm. BS. Um, so I think it's, she's had it pretty, I don't want to say pretty easy because being a mom and being a general is really tough. Yeah. However, it's well, not anywhere near as tough as it has been during like the empire war, you know, the, the star war. Um, well, that's the question, right? Is it harder yeah. to win the peace or keep the peace? And what is your role as a military Keep, person in yeah. keeping the peace versus winning the peace? So because that, as you can you know. see in Mando season three, and, and something that General uh, Captain Carson Tiva is trying to make everybody aware, when you're in a peaceful situation, when you're in peacetime, as a military presence, you cannot be lax. You cannot get mm-hmm. comfortable because that's how people take advantage of the system. And yep. little and we saw it happen. Are coming in. We've seen it happen. Yeah. So that, I, I, I will say that scene happened. with them at the factory and then getting the hyperdrive run away and then the tracker that was so well done. So um, cool. <laughs> one of the best. One of the best. Like I would say scenes in the show. Um, yeah. Some other, some other standouts before I want to come back to Ray because you mentioned him earlier. Ray Stevenson. Yeah. Um, uh, aside from the fact that it's just tragic that he's not here to yeah. get his roses and feel the love that we all have for him. Um, his performance is incredible. Like so there's something good. just like so broken about this character. Like when he's like, Oh, it'd be a shame to kill Ahsoka. There's so few of us left as Jedi, you know, Hi, Laurie. um, there's like a sadness there and you have yeah. to wonder what his motivation was for leaving the order. You have to imagine there's going to be a conversation of when he and Ahsoka finally throw down with their lightsaber fight, which we know is coming inside the yeah. map, right? We've oh, seen totally. it in the dome yeah. in the trailers. They're going to have to have a come to Jesus moment of like, <laughs> what made you leave the the big cult religion? And he's yeah. going to be like, well, I barely survived the skin of my, by the skin of my teeth, Order 66. And then after that, I decided to go into hiding. His story might be closer to someone like a Quinlan Voss or like right. – um, you know, any other Jedi that escaped like an Obi-Wan. It um, was so cool to see him, like, be in there and, and just his presence is, like, just commanding. Like, he said so few words, but you were terrified. Like, I'm what is this guy going to do yeah. next? Yeah, and, I don't and, mess with him. And um, Ivana, like, she's so good. Like, she's mm-hmm. so deadly and, 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 like, quick. Like, just... I think these two are fantastic, and they're some of the coolest villains that I've seen in Star Wars in a long time. Yeah, I like them as a duo. I love that she's got the braid. Someone mentioned it in the chat earlier that she is basically a Padawan. She's wearing the Padawan braid, but they're not following Jedi stuff. And their lightsabers are kind of orange, especially when you see it next to the red-bladed Merrick, um, also known as Corky Kree's. (laughs) <laughs> or um, Trist- Tristan Wren. That'll be my new thing. Tristan Wren. That'll be the new Mephisto. Right. We're throwing it against the wall. Yeah. See if it sticks. Tristan Wren with a red lightsaber coming after Sabine. Um, oh, something they're... else that I called. Um, our girl uh, Morgan Elsbeth. Oh, being, being a night sister. sister. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. I agree with that, and I think I also like betted correctly on that one because. Yeah. The, it's the only way she could have gone toe to toe with Ahsoka in the Mandalorian episode when they fought. Right? Is that yeah, she knows exactly. what's up. Um, I thought it was pretty obvious from the trailer of that green magic. I was like, I think she's a night sister. I love it. And they talk about witches at Dathomir. They use the word witches. They mention Dathomir. Yeah, um, her her ancestors and yep. just I, I'm I'm really thinking that she's going to use um Balin and um Balin and Shin to to kind of get what she wants out of things mm-hmm. and they're gonna retaliate against her. I'm throwing that out there. I like that. I like, I would love to see a three-way fight between them. Um, I think that um, it's interesting that she was captured and then needed their help to escape because I don't think she's a very powerful night sister or maybe her magic is lacking at the moment. She's certainly no mother Talzin. Um, She's certainly no Asajj Ventress. Maybe she can't access the force very well. Maybe her power is more passive. Um, It seemed like with the night sisters in Clone Wars, they were all kind of on the same level. It was like mother Talzin, and then there was everyone else, and they were all really strong and powerful or whatever. But as we've seen from, like, Marin in the video games, like, in the video game Jedi Fallen Order and um, Survivor, she's not quite as strong as them, but still has magic and stuff. This lady, because she says she's a descendant of, do we think she's halvesies? Like, is she, like, 
part night sister and like part human does she not have all the magic does she not have all the force like there's any number of things but like she's gonna have some type of power and i think when she activates it she's gonna surprise a lot of people about how strong oh, she yeah. is but she's not gonna have all of it um we're right. not getting live action mother Tal's in here which um no. i think is probably a good thing because that would be unstoppable um yeah. But yeah, I like the idea that like she is her threat level is still undetermined for me. Like I'm nervous about where she could go. And what if like it's not? Th by the way, someone whispering in her ear. That's not Thrawn. Thrawn doesn't have that capability. Right. Um, the the Emperor was whispering in Kylo Ren's ear for however long. Yeah. So what's going on there? Yeah, and the Emperor <laughs> has ways to kind of manipulate you and get you thinking that it's somebody else talking to you, yeah, exactly. as we've seen. And so I think that you're right. That will probably be how this ties in with Rise of Skywalker and the Rise of the Emperor. Yeah, and they're doing a lot of rec. They're doing a lot. We're doing a lot of heavy lifting on the retconning of F9, um, and trying to make things make sense. Yeah. But I don't think that the person in her ear is Thrawn. But I do think this star map is going to bring her somewhere interesting. Um, obviously, it's where the Purgles are headed or whatever. And um, there's I love those Purgles. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think. Um, I think that she, th there's more to this. There's more to this than we don't know. I also think it's now kind of confirmed at this point that like, <laughs> Snoke, <laughs> um, God help us. Uh, um, oh, go ahead. No, I, th I think that uh, we're not going to see Thrawn until the very end. I think no. this, I think this indication that like, it'll be the cliffhanger, like him getting up from this chair, like you see him walk in and just step up onto his thing and look, go to look out the window at the, the planet. I think that's going to be the final scene in the series. I'm calling it now. Yeah, I like that. I agree. I think Ian McDermott, um, you're right, Lori, like as much as I didn't love the emperor coming back in up nine, Ian McDermott's yeah. spectacular. So yeah. Um, and he, and he obviously loves this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, when we were rewatching um, World Between Worlds, I remember then watching the recon episode after, and Dave even saying just being able to hear Ian McDermott say Ahsoka Tano and Ezra Bridger. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, I've got chills. Like, can you see this? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I feel the same way. It's weird. Like, it's oh. weird the emotional stuff that gets you. Like, All this time, things. Man. Like, I remember when that happened, I was like, he said Ezra's name. Like, that's why Ian McDermott. Ezra the Emperor. So, ah! it's so good. Um, I do think that Thrawn's coming late in the game, if not the very final episode, because he has right. to remain the big bad. He's the Thanos to the Avengers team up that we will yeah. eventually get of like Mando, <laughs> Ahsoka, Ezra, whoever else, like the ghost crew. Again, what does it take to get the crew back together? Thrawn reappearing. That'll big bring threat. Zeb out of, you Night know. The masses. Yep. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be that. I, I, I think. I have to give a severe shout out to the fact that it has taken us 40 plus years to get a female versus female lightsaber duel in Star Wars. That's happened, right? No, yeah. this is the first time. In live action. In live action, yes. Okay, I was going to say. In, in so Clone that's why I said 40 the... years. But yeah, okay. Clone oh, no. Wars, that happened every week. It like happened a lot. Yeah, yeah. Ahsoka yeah. and Asajj and <laughs> Luminara Sabine, and Barriss. And... Yeah, no, we're yeah. fine. But like yeah. in live action, like this, huh. is, this is cool. So See, this is I'm... what I mean about the prequels. They had all these like female characters, but they were just women in costume yeah. standing there with no dialogue and no activity and no agency. Yeah. Like George didn't give us that, that the Clone Wars gave us that. Um, but even in the new trilogy, you're right. It was, there were only actually two force users really in the whole new trilogy. It was Ray yeah. and it was, it was Ray and Kylo and they didn't find anyone except each other. Um, and that's that's <laughs> what was missing. I was thinking about this the other day. Like the sequel trilogy didn't have enough characters, as crazy as no. that sounds. No, like and I, whatever they had for characters, it wasn't building their story in a, a creative way. It's yeah. just we're talking. We're gonna go do this. We're gonna talk there, and we're gonna go do this. And and it's mm -hmm. just there was no like growth really. It was so. plot, not story. Um, right. Yeah. Ac action without introspection. Talking um, for plastic. that's. I did not even realize because I guess Ahsoka fighting the magistrate um, before we knew she was a night sister. She's not wielding a lightsaber. She's yeah, it's just she's a duel. Spear. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, congrats <laughs> to the ladies. Um, also, yes. that's horrifying that it took this long. Oh my um, god! Because right? there are plenty of uh, force users, um, uh, and you know the force is not gender specific. Uh, at least it's not anymore. Um, we've largely solved that. I, I will say I was looking at the credits and it was it was wild because it's like Rosario Dawson. Um, Natasha, uh, Mary, Mary, um, oh my God, um, I'm, I'm blanking on everyone's names now, but it was all women. And then we got to like 
with David Tennant and Ray Stevenson, right? And those are the men. And I was like, oh, wow, yeah. the women are really running this show. Um, it's a Soka show. Sabine is really the second lead character. Um, Hera is super important. Um, and then even on the villain side, we've got um, our night sister and then the apprentice under Ray. So uh, it's, I think it's probably the, um, it's got to be the show with the most women and certainly the only yeah. ones where like the leads are all like the leads are all women basically. Yeah. And, and it's, it's refreshing. And I, yeah, the fact that there's so little that the, the masses, the, 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 <laughs> the the masses you know are complaining about it's i don't know are it they? gives me hope I'm well not, I'm I, not I don't think they're complaining right they haven't from no, what i saw I'm, okay good i'm i'm moderating several geek groups and i'm i'm not seeing any crazy people so That's yeah good. see mike says it's taken 46 years for female Jeez. and female it's a blue in live action so yeah crazy um i want to give a shout out to ming chu I think that's how it's pronounced. She was the stunt woman and the lightsaber uh, trainer for Ahsoka. So she's oh, wow. responsible for that epic battle. Um, so awesome. Make sure you guys follow her on Instagram. She's at Sun Moon L. Hmm. And she's to check it out. amazing. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I know that Jesse Graff was also, um, you know, from American Ninja Warrior. She yeah. was one of the stunt women. So um, good. There's so many it. amazing stunt people on the show. It's just spectacular. Um, I, and I will say, I think the stunts and all the action scenes were really well done. I love the opening, very um, Tomb Raider, Indiana Jones, totally. um, recovering the artifact. Look, I love a good physical MacGuffin and a map. Um, like, that'll do me every time. Like, I'm good on all them. Oh, JJ. <laughs> My boyfriend, JJ. JJ, is the stunt <laughs> coordinator. Um, that's the hot deputy from Book of Boba Fett, if anyone doesn't remember. Yeah, JJ go Dashnall. back and watch he, that. Yeah, he was also a guest <laughs> on um, the Thursday Night Watch Along a while ago. Um, so his episode was really YouTube. good because they cool. talk about all things stunt oriented in Book of Boba Fett, which I thought was one of the highlights of Book of Boba Fett. Um, Spencer, Merrick is not Mephisto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look. I have Don't a lot there. of Mephisto era, like Mephisto, <laughs> Mephisto level um, theories over here. I yeah. I really want to dig in on Tristan Wren now because it's the wildest and the weirdest. But it like, totally if it came is, through, and nobody else like, said it, so you're the first. No, it's, it's a million to one odds. Um, but I, and again, I'm never right, but it'll happen, and then you everyone will think know. I had insider info from being you a never licensee. Know. But I'm, again, they tell me nothing. Um, Going back to the things we loved about the show. So I love the opening. I love that sequence. I love the stuff on Lothal. I thought Lothal looked great. The mural looked great. That opening ceremony thing so was good. tremendous and perfectly well done. Um, Sabine riding away on her motorcycle. I'm um, listening to that. It needed sabotage. Music, which was amazing. We'll, um, we'll settle for the Illuminati hotties. I loved it. I thought it was so well done. It felt like it was Star Wars, but also felt like we very rarely get vocals in Star Wars. It's all very instrumental. Um, like mo almost every song on every soundtrack and every show and everything, like you very rarely hear vocals unless it's an ah kind of thing, like very, you know, yeah, like Latin chant kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but like th I thought that was super well done. Um, and I loved Sabine's like where she is in the world right now with the long hair and all of her motivation. It was all very clear. Um, I thought all of that was just tremendous they really I, set I really up like, where we're her. going yeah 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 I oh yeah like she's in a low spot she's it it reminded me of you know what someone goes through when someone suddenly dies like they just kind of live in their skin for a while like I, it, it sounds horrible but like live with their clothes and their stuff yeah. like sabine is literally living in ezra's home yeah his old apartment basically home. Yeah. Like all his stuff, all his, you know, the, the paintings that she's made for him on the wall, his the helmets. helmets. Yep. Hem, Mark. Hem. Yeah. So many good helmets in this episode. So many good helmets. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just, she's, she's grieving. Like all these yeah. years later, she's still grieving the loss of Ezra. And. And I think um, she is isolated the way Mike yeah. is saying. Um, and I think that they only wanted to wheel her out there to put her on display for everyone because she's now an object 
Um, and, you know, because she's part of the narrative, right? Like, she's yeah. part of the crew that liberated the fall. And notice that Ryder Azadi is governor again, and Jai Kel is a senator. People are moving up in the world. They're all benefiting from what they did. And Sabine <laughs> is like, I don't want to benefit from this. I just want, the, like, I want Ezra back. And, and you know, it reminds me of someone who's truly gone through war and gone through hell. Like, it's yeah. some people, like, want to be all, recognized, right? recognized for their sacrifice, and other people just kind of want to be left alone. Yeah. And, and we already know that something went sour, went, went, went sideways once, right? It seems like she probably tried to leave Lothal. So there was a question on the internet about, well, like the final scene of Rebels and if they had done it again in Ahsoka. And I was like, no, it just, it's poetry. It rhymes. It's not the same scene that sort of plays out the same way a second time. Because at the end of Rebels and a time period to be determined, which was before the events of the Ahsoka show, Ahsoka and Sabine go off to find Ezra. And then I think that's probably when she was training and all of that, and it didn't go very well. And so she comes back to Lethal. And so she's back to where she was after a failed attempt. So not only did we lose Ezra, but we didn't find him. We've already failed on the mission. So she has like a double failure there, right? So, so now as so Ahsoka's yeah. coming back, she's like, we're gonna go do it again. And it's and and after being attacked by the Inquisitor, she's like, Well, I have to. Like, you know, yeah, I, I feel like what we see in the epilogue and what we see with Sabine cutting her hair and mm -hmm. that is the same thing. I, I, I think that really? Because her I don't hair think is that... Yeah, but I it I sets think... it up like exactly, and it, there's no way that the same thing happened twice. I just think that they got rid of the staff, and I... and decided to do it differently. But I, I feel like they have been trying to find Ezra, and exhausting all things to to get to him, and it's just it's something that Sabine and Ahsoka have clashed on because she's letting her emotions cloud her training. Like she's mm. she's just getting so involved in this. Like, no, we have to find him. And Ahsoka's like, you have to relax. You have to let go of attachments and, and things like that. And we got to go to Dagobah. You got to yeah. train for a while. Got to go hang yeah. upside down in a cave. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, but I feel I... like the this what we see in the epilogue and what we see at the end of um the second episode of Ahsoka. Episode two. You is, think it's the same scene? It's the same thing. Yeah. I think she I think it's poetry. It rhymes. Yeah. yeah. I think she does it again. It's poetry. It rhymes. Yeah, so it's. I'm gonna fight all of you in the comments. I see all of you agreeing <laughs> with Ashley. I hate you yeah. all. You're dead to me. So N yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's. I I think the end of episode two is the epilogue. It's where we see Sabine oh, and Mike and, and I are no longer friends. Ahsoka going, but obviously we don't see Hu Yang. I, I honestly I love that we have him. This I love my David Tennant. I love my yeah. sassy doctor. My, my kill mom, you know, kill grave and stuff like that. He's great. Um. <laughs> However, I the fact that they kind of have Hu Yang around to like look up lightsabers, like be like a lightsaber encyclopedia, I, I kind of find that fascinating. Like it's it's, it's kind of like a portable Jedi archive or yeah. like a portable like Ollivander. Just like uh, only one Jedi ever had this lightsaber. And like, yeah, he's got it I, in his databanks. We could use a computer, but. I I wonder they're, if they're trying to give us a very heavy-handed way of saying that Ahsoka is trying to hang on to something from the days of the Jedi and like what else is left. By the, by the way, how the hell did Hu Yang escape? Um, of all the of all the survivors of Order sixty six, like no one should have been able to leave the Jedi Temple, droids included. Um, and Hu Yang makes it out. Like that's the kind of thing where I'm sort of yeah. like shocked by all of that. Um, but I agree. <laughs> I love Hu Yang. Um, I love my David Tennant. Um, I think he's a fascinating addition to the show because he's not yeah. someone I would have picked. Like if no. I were thinking like who are we pulling in from Clone Wars to help with this, um, you know, he's actually a really great. He's actually a great plot device because we can use him like an like a computer, like an encyclopedia, and yeah, kind of exactly. like fill in. Plus, you have to have a droid in everything, and Chopper can't be in every scene, and he's why also not. Like, you know, well, he's got to be, he's tethered to Hera, no, I right? I know. So, but yeah, like from, so from production perspective, it makes sense to give her a droid. And I bet you they were like, we should use a droid we already know. Because this show, more than any other show I've seen on Disney+, Plus, and this speaks to all of Marvel as well, I think comes with the most, I'll say air quotes, required reading. And like knowledge, like necessary knowledge yeah. going in. I'm actually concerned that it's not broad enough for like an audience who doesn't know who Ahsoka is, doesn't know who Sabine is, doesn't know what a Lothal is. Like, can you just jump in right. and appreciate the show? I don't know if I could. 
I watched no. other videos on the internet saying like, oh yeah, like it seemed like so, the more casual Star Wars fans were fine with it, but who can tell? We're we we, right, we host a but... show on YouTube about Rebels. Like <laughs> I have no understanding Thank you, of what Lori. it must be yeah. like to yeah. you know. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, you're <laughs> absolutely right. Man, Lori. <laughs> but you know, but you know, like I, I'm I'm finding difficulty in this is going to sound kind of callous. And, and if you are in this group, I'm sorry, but you've had since 2018 to watch Rebels and the poo pooing about the animation and the cartooning. Mm -hmm. Dave started an animation. The whole reason he is working yep. for Lucasfilm is animation. Yep. So, of course, he's going to tie something into his work in animation and live action because it's characters that he loves so much and puts so much of his heart and soul into. Um, there, there's so many things that obviously we've been doing this for over a year now. We love it so much. We talk about it. We talk about the creative process. Um, I'm having a really hard time finding any empathy for those who are just like, oh, it's not accessible. Like, it is accept accessible. Disney Plus, you have Disney Plus. You're watching the show. Mm -hmm. You it's also right have there. the internet on your phone. There's, there's, uh, you know, um, a few sites like content. Screen Crush, who has like the history of Star Wars Rebels in 30 minutes. Like you can do that on your lunch break. Yep. Star Wars Explained also did a series that we should have probably done as well, where they did a season recap. Um, yeah. That was in an hour. So they did yeah. season one in an hour. Did that season too. two in an hour. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everyone, I think every major YouTube yeah. platform basically did what we did in a condensed way where we picked like we did a lot of watch alongs. We've also been running for over a year now. So we're making our way through. We're we're the encyclopedia and they are the Cliffs Notes. Um, but, like, <laughs> exactly. The Cliffs Notes are good. Um, yeah. Honestly, like I highly recommend Screen Crush. Um, uh, new rock stars, Star Wars Explained, I talk about all the time. Yeah. I love them. Coffee with yes. Kenobi was doing a run through. Yes. Like, I think every podcast out there, um, every YouTube channel, and there's a ton of us, we're all in involved in Rebels <laughs> getting ready for this. Um, also, one other note, Ahsoka debuted in The Mandalorian in 2020, like or 2021. It's been a minute, and we knew her show was coming. So there was definitely a long runway to yeah. like let you know that there was time and you should go watch this stuff. Yeah. So, um, and, and having the dark yeah. saber pop up in the Mandalorian, like, what's the dark saber? And everyone says, "Well, you have to yeah. watch Rebels." Like, you've had more than enough time. Yeah, there have been and, other things that should have gotten you in. Yeah, yeah exactly. Bo there are other, Clone yeah. Wars. Bo Katan like, is all over Clone Wars and all Rebels. All of it. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, with with that, I will say that despite the what I think is a high barrier of entry, I also think it wasn't super confusing. Like, yeah. I know where these characters were, but even if I didn't, I do know where they are at the start. And it seems pretty obvious where they are headed. Like, one of the things that I didn't love about Book of Boba Fett was that I didn't know what the hell anyone's motivation was for anything. Like, I, I was trying to understand like maybe it's because boba fett himself was confused about what his yeah. purpose in the universe is right um but like i didn't get that character and he wasn't the character i came in with preconceived notions about like you know i realized that the boba fett of return of the jedi was going to be very different from the boba fett of like the new we didn't republic know him. era we just knew but, he like, was a bounty hunter yeah and he was that's all i got for java invader like that's yeah. all we knew and then all of a sudden he was gonna he was gonna take over which i thought i was like oh that's cool like he'll run Jabba's palace and then it turns out he's like oh he's not a villain like it was very that it was very like this yeah. face this heel to face turn didn't work um, and that's why I'm so glad that um John Favreau is taking a step back and you know giving Dave a chance to spearhead this like he's obviously still on yeah. as executive producer however Dave's writing is obviously better like the some of the most amazing episodes of Rebels were written by Dave Filoni. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, and look, I like I like it so far. Um, yeah. I always try to reserve judgment until the whole series is done. Um, right. But I will tell you, I could tell a few episodes in that I wasn't going to love Kenobi. I could tell by the middle of Boba Fett that like it wasn't working the way I wanted it to. Like I think we I think we all talk a lot about we joke about the back to tank dream sequences. <laughs> yeah. I kind of liked the split screen kind yeah. of like here's the past where I learned something and here's the present day where I put it into action. Like that structure was fine for me, but then they just stopped using it. And then in the present day, it took on a whole other story. So all of a sudden we were in like, a, I was like, what's going on here? But I think it suffered from like all things in 2021 and 2022, 
things that were going to be movies becoming TV, things that were going to be a TV show um, or a big series becoming a miniseries, slates getting moved around. Like there was just a lot of chaos with the studios and everything felt either unfinished or like a rough draft version or bad special effects. Like you pick a problem and a show had it, right? I think yeah. for Book of Boba Fett, it was like the... Un, the 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 not knowing exactly what that show was like it was a movie that they stretched into a tv show and stuffed in a bunch of stuff to set up other things right yeah like hence the mandalorian episodes that were in there right because we have to continue to push mando season three because otherwise it would have had no promotion like there's those types of like corporate things that yeah gotta get yeah, grogu in there so people yeah. watch it like yeah stuff like that so that that was a major symptom of like every studio and i think we really feel it right now in dc like dc is flopping hard at the box office um all of their movies have been a problem and part of it is uh i think not really caring that much about these characters but not also knowing that they're not really going to matter in a little while but also feeling like you need to know all this stuff to go to the theater just to watch a movie like yeah. do i need to know a million things before i go see the flash or like know who blue beetle is like that type of thing i will say with ahsoka at least it's free um and it's on once a week um and you have time to watch some wrap around um and get caught up and Hopefully people will like it. I I'm I'm liking it. I'm I'm thinking it's really great so far. And by the way, I agree, Mike. Blue Beetle was terrific. So I have to see it yet. Yeah, but I was surprised. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm yeah. not too familiar with the character, but um, Sholo from uh, Cobra Kai. He's really great. So mm -hmm. I think he could do it. Yeah, he's he's good. The the lead actor who plays Blue Beetle is actually like shockingly good. Um, I actually hope they hold him in for like the new DCU, but who knows? Um, plans change all the time. As announced just the other day, Dune is moving from 2023 to 2024. March 2024. You know? I was yeah. so mad. It's a big like, change. Yeah. Working on my Bene Gesserit cosplay where I just <sighs> write on my face like Jim Carrey and Liar Liar. Yeah. <laughs> Call it <Yeah>. a day. <laughs> yeah, it's the kind um, of thing where I'm like, um, I really... Uh, <laughs> I, Spencer just sent me something funny, but yeah, I um, said that to me too. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that like the studios need to reassess their entire slate of all content across the board, yeah. um, and that's just a tough thing to do, right? Because ultimately, there was a plan, and now the plan has to change. Um, I think in the case of Ahsoka, uh, it's probably coming out a lot later than they had hoped. Um, but I think that this can stand alone as a project, even yeah. if you're not super deep into Clone Wars or Rebels or whatever else. Yeah. And it can also set something else up without feeling like a setup. I will yeah. say, I think the big concern, though, is that Thrawn is barely going to be in the series. And it's going to feel like we just teased a movie where he's the villain and this was all to get to Thrawn. Um, that's going to be the complaint. Along with I the do. fact that like, I think some people don't like that Sabine is force sensitive, potentially, right? I don't think she's force sensitive. And I, I read an article that just kind of hints at it this way. Um, because Sabine still has like a lot of like, you know, she wants to honor the sacrifice that Ezra made and make sure that mm -hmm. no other dark side people can pop up. She, I believe she um, had Ahsoka train her in the ways of the Jedi without being force sensitive. So how to use the lightsaber, how to fight, etc., without being force sensitive. In order to be like a keeper of the peace, I yeah. I still don't think she's a force sensitive person, which is kind of a relief because if they were going down that road, I'd be like, Ugh. does everybody mm -hmm. have to be force sensitive? But I, I feel better about it after reading that and the possibility that 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 could be something that is is happening. Mm -hmm. um, There's a however, line that I, like, Shin says to her, "You don't have yeah. any power." Um, two ways to go from there yes i yeah. do hit her with the force or i don't need the force and i'm still gonna kick your ass either way it's gonna be great because look sabine's gonna win that fight who are we kidding yeah. shin is yeah do we think shin is making it out dead or uh, making it alive i don't think so i think that girl's dead um which yeah. you know but i think she goes to the light side i think, think her so? and Valen go to the light side yeah i don't think so um, yeah I don't think that I'm not, I'm also not in the business of like hoping for redemption yeah. for like any of the villains. I don't like it. I don't like it. I think <laughs> yeah. it's that simple. I don't like it. I, I, I think mean, it cheapens the dynamic to yeah. a degree, but you know, I kind of hope that they, uh, kind of like a Saj, like they're not really a good guy, but they're not really a, a that they're dark bad guys. anymore. They're villains. They killed but, a lot yeah. of innocent people with their orange yeah. lightsabers. So, um, 
So yeah. I don't have any sympathy for them. Uh, I do think it's interesting that they both seem like kind of scared yeah. of her, of um, El of um, Diana, um, Morgan. Yeah, Morgan. Uh, I really, Morgan. I think it's interesting that like yeah. they had to rescue her, yet they are scared of her. It seems so. Yeah. Um, so what kind yeah. of power does she have over them? That's the question. Yeah, or like um, uh, maybe they just don't understand Night Sister magic, right? I mean, they understand the Force, and they look. I feel like they could kill her pretty easily if they needed to, but like maybe oh, yeah. they can't, and that's what. And maybe I know that they're in it for power, right? Like that's what they. That's what the whole thing is. Like when Thrawn's going to get them power somehow. No, um, I have a question. Somebody brought this up. I've I've seen this floating around the internet as something to talk about. Thrawn's ship has pieces of the Jedi Temple on the Thal. Do you think they're just trying to find Thrawn to get the Jedi Temple back to claim its power? Or are that feels about? like that feels like a lot of heavy reading AP calculus style homework. It's <laughs> not. It, it's it's too specific. Um, I, I I don't think so, and I actually fully forgot about that. I don't think. I think it's. I think it's just broad that like Thrawn equals power, whether it be the Empire coming back or access to the world between worlds or something. Um, but and that's what they need. Yeah. Yeah, they need something like that. I also don't know why they're so craving of the power when they seem to be doing fine on their own already. Yeah, um, they're kicking what, ass. What, what, what more do you want? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I also think that if you're going to have one of those people go to the light side, I would prefer for it to be the girl and add her to the crew of badass women. Um, yeah, I think we've organically Jen. built a group of badass women without doing the like Marvel setup of like, she's not alone or like the, from the boys, like girls get it done. Yeah. Like we talked about that in the Mandalorian season <laughs> two. Is it season two of the Mandalorian yeah. where, yeah, With, where they, like, when the all female Ardune crew just like, and, and yeah. Coffee. Um, Bo-Katan and Fennec, yeah. And that wasn't laid out from the start to be like, hey, let's get our best women to go on this mission. It was like, yeah. who are the people that we know are our first round draft picks? And they just happen to be. Um, and that's how it's done well. Yeah. Yep. Oh, this, I'm, I'm telling you, though. I, I watched it with a friend on Tuesday night, and they hadn't finished Rebels. Like, they'd only watched up to maybe season two by that point. So in a week, they finished it. Um, mm, that's fast. But they understood enough of what was happening in Ahsoka while they didn't quite know everything. Like, it was easy enough to follow and be like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. And then when we watched episodes of, of Rebels and stuff like that and Chopper blew up the Star Destroyer, <laughs> like, he's like, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, this is why we call him the, the highest kill count in Star Wars. Like, yeah, exactly. It's um, just it's all those trooper right out the airlock. But like things like that happening and, and it's still easy enough for him to follow and for someone who's never finished Rebels to, to follow what's happening. And then to understand it now is once they've finished it, like it's it's pretty cool. So I'm yeah, I'm hoping that this show makes more people go back and watch Rebels. Um, you know, even so after too. the fact, or maybe during, uh, we're going to continue to watch every week, obviously. Yeah. Um, there, there are so many other things, and by the way, I know we're at time. Um, and there's also an Ahsoka after show where they go into really deep, um, conversations on this. We just wanted to get our sort of thoughts out there. One, because yeah. we had our prediction show hijacked by Ahsoka Eve, um, which was the right move, by the way. Totally um, right. It man. made sense to have the whole group on. That was really fun. I'm sorry you missed it, Ashley, but it was it was a good time. Oh yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm um, feeling much better, but oh good. my god, Lori, Chopper versus Homelander, the crossover battle we need. Can you oh, imagine? <laughs> Can yeah. You imagine? By the way, I love the boys. So the show better. is the show is off the rails. Um, <laughs> There's so much more we need to get into, but I, and by the way, we are not going to become an Ahsoka um, review show. Uh, no. We're going to leave that to the after show that's going to be airing um, every Friday on the network, and of course every Thursday is the watch along. So we have got you covered yeah. for Ahsoka related content here on the VCN. We'll um, do what we, you know, what we yeah, we're going to pop do in with, as needed. We'll just start and and be like give our quick thoughts yeah. and then just jump into the remainder of our episode. So yeah. Um, yeah. We'll do a little bit at the start of every episode. Yes, my boy! <laughs> we'll bring him in as needed also to be our um, our yeah. little mascot. Um, 
yeah, I think for us, like, our whole thing is we want to continue what we're doing with the Rebels show. Um, and then if something crazy town happens, we will adjust programming. Of course. And it. Yeah. Of course, at the start of every episode, because we are on, like, a, a, a Ahsoka Eve now every Monday. Uh, we'll yes. talk a little bit of Ahsoka. Um, you know, I, I, I hope we get to see live action Zeb. I wonder yeah. if we're going to see live action Callus. I mean, we've seen, we oh. saw live action Ryder Azadi. I mean, what are we, what are we doing here? Like, yeah. it's wild. Like, it's crazy how much, like, has come through now. I, I teared up when I saw him. Like, no joke. Like, I, was, I heard his voice and I'm like, they got, yeah. they got Clancy. And I'm just like, I couldn't there, believe like, it. At first, I was like, wow, he really it. sounds like Clancy Brown. I was like, wait a minute, that's him. Because <laughs> the, the beard was insanity. Like, he's they do got a really such good... a great beard. And he still has that beard. He's just grown out his hair a little longer. Good, good so, for him. Like, to keep it under wraps, too. Yeah. Oh, um, so look, I know he's not like big on Twitter or anything, but like, it was good he's that that's He just posted leak. on Instagram the yeah. other day, but obviously, you can't talk yeah. about struck work with the strike so he just posted about a book and like his face over the book and i'm like oh thank you for writing it's so funny <laughs> um sherry brings up a good point too every yeah. tuesday on zoom yes. um so there's gonna be our normal happy hour is tuesday starting at five o'clock pacific seven, seven, seven o'clock seven. eastern seven, seven eastern? eastern okay so four, four o'clock pacific, pacific. Yeah. there we go um and and then we're gonna everyone's gonna break and watch Rebels, Rebels, Ahsoka, Rebels yeah, season five, thing. Ahsoka, um, <laughs> and then I think people are going to come back after that and hang out. I don't know. That seems it seems wild. Uh, mm -hmm. I it sounds like a good time. Um, maybe we'll pop into some of that. Um, we should talk a little bit about programming on the network. So yep. um, it's because it's been a really exciting time right now. A lot of new shows, a lot of new ac activity. Um, yeah, we're calling Tuesday nights the Ahsoka support group um, because of the <laughs> therapy that's necessary. Uh, so Monday nights are is still Rebels Revisited, and we're on every Monday, including next week when it's Labor Day. So we're Labor actually going to do a pre-record um, because we know that everyone has vacation time planned. We've got a special episode. We're going to do a best of Sabine Wren because um, it yes. turns out that Sabine really is like the lead of this show. <laughs> um, so we, yeah. we didn't do like an isolated best of Sabine. The Daughters of the Galaxy episode on Sabine is spectacular, and you guys should Thanks. absolutely watch that. Yeah. Um, but we're going to do our own Rebels. We're going to bring like our top five moments um, uh, and discuss, you know, our favorite things from Rebels with Sabine. So that'll and be really we're going to have a special guest host. So we'll have our yeah. girl, a resident loaf cat, Jamie, with us for the show. Um, obviously, we have to hear her thoughts and, and her favorite top five Sabine moments as well. So yeah. nice to, to get to the bottom we of that. 15 moments. We'll see how much overlap we have. Because I bet yeah. you between the three of us, I always like, love our top doing five that. is going to – it's we're not going to have anything in, in the same placement. I don't think, especially if it's only a top five list, not a top 10 list, we're going to have very little overlap. Right. Um, so that'll be really fun. So that's next Monday this week, obviously tomorrow, join us for Tuesday night, happy hour slash the Ahsoka support group. Um, this Wednesday, we've got a big premiere. The Nerf Herders Ooh. are joining the VCN family yeah. and they are on every other Wednesday. And just as a reminder, daughters of the galaxy is on the first and third Wednesday of every month, which is why they're not on this week, because it's the fifth yes. Wednesday of the month. Um, I know that gets a little confusing. The Unifying Force and Jedi Archives also do a first and third, second and fourth situation. Um, the Nerf right. Herders are just literally every other week. So they have 26 shows throughout the year. Daughters of the Galaxy will have 24 shows throughout the year. And there will right. be weeks where they overlap, and we will figure that out. Future Mark will deal <laughs> with that, um, but yeah. not, not today. <laughs> So uh, we'll this it. this Wednesday, though, very excited to tune in and see the Nerf Herders. Um, you probably met both. Thank if you, you watched Mike. our Ahsoka Eve show last Monday, the two of them were on um, talking about uh, their show and, um, you know, giving their thoughts on Ahsoka. They're going to do a recap of the first three episodes. And then Thursday is the watch along um, where we'll watch episode three. And then with Friday. Who? With who? Um, with Spencer, Mike, and. Spencer, Jeff, and Dave. Is there anyone else and visiting? You? Me? Are you visiting? I'm, I'm not on, on Thursday. <laughs> Are no. you sure? Because Spencer said last week you were on. <laughs> For this Thursday? No, yeah. no one told me. Oh boy. Spencer! Um, <laughs> I better I better check. I might be a very special guest host this Thursday. We'll find out. Um, <laughs> Don't throw it out there. So, Thank you, yes, uh, thir you. Thursday. Join us with a VCN watch along. Um, the <laughs> Friday after show is Mike. Bryce and John, right. um, not me. And then, not uh, <laughs> and then Sunday is Jedi Archives. Um, so we've got a we've got a full list of 
um, content throughout the week, and then it's Labor Day, and we're, we have our pre-record for Sabine Wren, and then Daughters of the Galaxy for um, Varys and Luminara, which is very exciting. So yeah, yeah. Did I? Did I? <laughs> I guess maybe I did. Um, I sure. Uh, I, I think I'm free. I'll double check. That sounds. And I look. I'm thrilled to be included. So um, I I will probably see you guys on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, it's what fun, and at least you're, oh, yeah. you'll be on for an hour and not <laughs> two hours. Look, I, I love the Thursday Night Watch Longs. That's where I got yeah, my so start. Fun. That was the backdoor pilot to this show. Yes. Um, so you never so, know. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. Um, what else do we have going on? Anything else we need? We need to plug stuff. I feel like there's always a plug. Yeah, right? we have um, new merch in our T Public store. Uh, Daughters of the Galaxy collection with this swanky. I absolutely love that logo design. And the What Would Hera Do shirt fantastic i need to get my hands on those um we also have other stuff in the tea public store as long as our, our prime month our patriotic all of our shows our rebels oh, revisited good. line we are just so much cool stuff going on in that shop and this sales all the time so make sure you guys check that out um also i'm trying to think what else we have going forward oh the, um, the vacation oh um yeah. there's our rebels yeah. visited shirt um yeah and then yes uh vacation 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 um things are coming together on that front uh we're less than a year away um which is hilarious to say it out loud that way but uh i think tickets go on sale in december so um limited spots i think 70 spots total so um be on the lookout that's going to be a ton of fun july 29th through august 2nd as we storm california um it's going to be wild starting in the south and making our way north um so right. Uh, we'll talk more about that on Thursday, I guess, when I guest host on the VCN watch along. So um, I'm watching everything. It's crazy because this week is like we're we obviously had our show tonight. We're pre-recording for Labor Day on Daughters of the Galaxy. I definitely want to tune into the Nerf Herders because um, I want to see their show. Um, and, you know, obviously support their premiere on the network. And yeah. then Thursday, the watch along will be really fun. So, um, oh, yeah, yeah there, they, there they are. They're um, already they're, here. They're not. Yeah. They're here. <laughs> exactly. Uh, they were really fun on the... Yeah, they that, were. That Ahsoka Eve was a great time. I really do think we'll do the same thing, like the post-Ahsoka. Once we get to the finale, um, we will do another check-in uh, with everyone um, as like a Ahsoka finale uh, sort of... What are we calling it? A VCN special presentation or whatever. That'll be, yeah. you know, a few weeks, <laughs> several weeks from now. A lot, of, a lot will be happening between now and then. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I think that's it. I, we have a lot of news to cover on. Now that there's yeah. so many shows on the network, that's a lot, man. We need to have a pre-record of just like all the stuff that's coming. Play, show the big graphic of everything that's happening this week and be out. So, <laughs> And also, if you guys are Disney Plus subscribers, make sure you go to the shop link, uh, the shop header in your Ahsoka um, Disney Plus thing to get your hands on some exclusive merchandise only available till the 31st. I so yeah yeah and I those sabers look merch. cool that box set with the blades um i might have to get them because i have the original rebels ahsoka sets both of them and they come in like the the square case not the rectangle one so um i think i need another one <laughs> i like it i think it's a good plan um more merch more merch right. <laughs> um i'm sure we'll end up with ahsoka merch at some point so yeah. like yeah. any Chopper, anything Sabine. Yep. Sarah, you got my money. So excellent. All right. I think that's it for this week. Yeah. Make sure you're following us on all the socials. And we will oh. see you guys. Oh, subscribe to the channel. Please, please, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We have 60,000 Facebook members um, yeah. and nowhere near that number on YouTube. So we'd yeah. love for you to join us on YouTube. Um, and if you get subs if you subscribe to us, you'll also be notified about all of our content from the hundred shows that we have on right. the network now. Hit Spencer's dream is to bell. be on daily. We'll be on, we'll be on hourly um, <laughs> by, the, by this time next year with, with content. We're basically a TV station. Seriously. So yeah. join us on YouTube, uh, the virtual cantina network, um, subscribe and <laughs> ring the bell to get notifications and tell your friends. Um, and thank you guys for joining us so much. Yeah. We'll see you. We'll see you next week um, for our best of Sabine. Yes. May the force be with you guys. Bye everyone. Bye.